Hi everyone, Robert Kajiwara here, continuing our look at the history of Christianity in the United States as part of my PhD in history program through Liberty University. This week we're going to take a look at the 1920s through 1930s. It was a time of great uh, upheaval and controversy in the United States and especially the uh, Protestant churches in the United States. Uh, this period is known as the fundamentalist versus modernist controversy. Uh, this is not a subject that gets talked a lot about uh, in the public uh, today, but it's actually very important. It's had an important impact uh, not only on the United States, but by extension, the rest of the world as well. And we're going to take a look at why. So the fundamentalist versus modernist controversy, this was a time of great schism among the Protestant churches in the United States. Fundamentalists today, we refer to them as evangelicals or evangelical Christians. Okay, they're, they're not the fundamentalist uh, that we often think of when we hear the word fundamental Christian. I think a lot of people, when they hear the word fundamentalist Christian today, they're often thinking of kind of extreme Christianity or extremist churches such as uh, Westboro Baptist Church who are very known for their controversial uh, uh, image. Uh, but that's not what fundamentalists meant in the early 20th century. Like I said, fundamentalists really uh, is the equivalent today of evangelical or, or Christian evangelicals. And then modernist uh, refers to people who were more on the liberal side who uh, basically wanted to change uh, the fundamentals of Christianity and or of Christian theology at the time. Uh, basically, they didn't believe in things like miracles or they didn't really believe that Jesus was the Son of God or other important Christian doctrines like that. So uh, that's uh, what the fundamentalist versus modernist controversy uh, was about. In 1922, William Jennings Bryant, who we talked a bit about last time, uh, published this cartoon, which is a good illustration, I think, of uh, what m the modernist movement was. On a side note, I think it's interesting how uh, Westerners, uh, that is Americans and Western Europeans, uh, tend to have some trouble accepting uh, the supernatural things or miracles and, and other things like that, whereas indigenous peoples um, around the world, uh, in my experience, um, have a lot uh, more openness towards the supernatural, indigenous peoples, uh, including uh, Okinawans. So the fundamentalist modernist controversy was certainly not the first schism to hit uh, the U.S. Protestant churches. Uh, contemporary newspapers point out that Jonathan Edwards, a couple hundred years earlier, had also ushered in uh, intense theological controversy. And J. Grisham Machen was an important figure during this time. He was one of the leaders of the fundamentalist movement. Machen was a, a professor at Princeton Theological Seminary. I apologize if I'm saying his name wrong. His article published in 1936, The Changing Scene in an Unchanging World, is a short document, uh, but he basically predicts and even advocates in favor of, of a schism or breaking away uh, from the Presbyterian Church of the United States of America at the time uh, due to the de denomination's more liberal views and basically uh, due to their embracing of modernist thought. In the article, Machen actually says it's not a schism for them to break away from the church because the church had become an apostate church, uh, or in other words, a church that, um, well, broke away from fundamental. So Machen basically lays the blame uh, for the schism not on the fundamentalists, but on the modernists, on the denomination for changing their uh, theology. The schism in the Presbyterian Church, of course, did occur. Uh, other denominations also saw a lot of changes. Uh, some some other denominations, such as the Southern Baptist Convention, which uh, I'm a member of, um, they solidified their own the theological beliefs. This is a turning point in, in American history because at this point, uh, Christianity is no longer the dominant socio-political force that it had been. 
America was becoming increasingly liberal. And you see that play out in the upcoming presidential elections at the time where Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected for a record four terms. Roosevelt, of course, used state-sanctioned uh, racial prejudice uh, against Japanese Americans, including Okinawan Americans. Uh, Roosevelt's successor, Harry Truman, of course, uh, would drop not one but two atomic bombs on large civilian Japanese cities. Modernists would remain very influential, at least up until uh, the 1970s, when uh, fundamentalists now known as Christian evangelicals would uh, reemerge and regain a lot of influence and political power. They helped get Richard Nixon elected, and later they would play a huge role in helping Ronald Reagan get elected. So you can see how the fundamentalist versus modernist controversy helped uh, lay the foundation for America's current uh, political and social scene. Today, though, it's really more about evangelicals versus uh, liberals, I guess, or atheists or agnostics or or uh, non-Christians. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to see more of our videos, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.